This is the Ionic 5 and it's Hyundai's cutting edge electric car that's just gone on sale in India. I'll quickly run through all the facts and figures that are already in the public domain. Now this car has a 72 kilowatt hour battery pack. It has an ARAI range of 631 kilometers. It's got an electric motor that powers the rear wheel and that electric motor makes 217 horsepower and 350 newton meters of torque. All of that is yours for 44.95 lakh rupees ex showroom. Question is, how do all those numbers actually come together? And how does a Hyundai Ionic 5 fit into the India scheme of things? Whether you see one in New Delhi or New York, the Ionic 5 will stand out for the way it looks. It's got this whole neo-retro vibe that just works. But while Hyundai calls the Ionic 5 an SUV, it isn't one. It's a crossover at best. The silhouette is hatchback, but what doesn't come through in the images and videos is the size of the thing. It matches a Mercedes GLC in length, width and height, and within the length is a huge 3 meter long wheelbase. The Ionic 5 is big on show value too. It's all sharp lines and crisp creases, and lighting has been used to brilliant effect. The LED headlamps with their pixel signature are sleek, but the real cool touch is the accent lighting below that seemingly glows from the bodywork when lit. Hyundai's parametric theme is carried on to the intricate looking 20-inch wheels too, while Z-shaped character lines, perhaps styled by Zorro, and flush-fitting door handles are other slick details at the sides. The unique pixel LED tail lamps make it easy to establish the car you're tailing, and the roof-mounted spoiler adds in some sportiness too. But no wiper at the back. The airflow from the roof is supposed to push rainwater away. We'll have to see how effectively that works. On a sunny day in Goa, the Ionic 5 sure wowed. Hidden under that fancy skin is the Hyundai Group's eGMP skateboard electric vehicle only platform. Cool factoid, eGMP also underpins the Ionic 5's cousin from Kia, the EV6. The platform is properly advanced with 800 volt charging support. The benefits of the EV only platform are most evident inside. The Ionic 5's cabin is unlike any other Hyundai. In fact, it's pretty much unlike any other car that you've probably been in. And that's all thanks to its skateboard platform. The batteries are underneath, there's no big transmission tunnel, which is why there's this big gap between the front seats. Hyundai calls it the walkthrough cabin. Now, in case you're wondering, the gear lever is pushed all the way here. It's just under the headlight stock and uh, it is quite an unusual arrangement. Another thing of big note on the Ionic 5 is the sheer level of storage space inside. In fact, I don't think I've been in a car with more storage. Now, apart from the usual suspects of the bottle holders on the doors, you get cup holders on the center console. There's a wireless charging pad. There's a huge bay between the front seats. The armrest opens up for more space. There's an other bay over here and a drawer like glove box. Uniquely, the entire center console can also be moved backwards by up to 140 millimeters. In terms of design, it's all very minimalist, but beautifully done, very tasteful in the choice of colors, in the choice of materials, very in keeping with the theme of the Ionic 5. For instance, plant-based paints, recycled paperette, and recycled plastics have been used in the cabin and win it some extra points. Moving from green to screen. You get very crisp, very clear digital dials that give you all the information you need, including for the ADAS functions. The touchscreen is nice and large. It's in clear sight and very, very slick. It's really, really nice to use. And the other cool thing is the steering. It's a two-spoke unit and again, very much in keeping with the Ionic, uh, being distinctive to everything else out there. Curiously, there's no Hyundai logo on the steering boss. Hyundai might call this an SUV, but that seating position isn't very high and towering. It feels more like a crossover and that is really the best way to describe this. Now, as for the seat itself, it is really comfortable, multi-way adjust. It gets cooling, it gets warming, a lot of electronic adjustability just built into it. And there is also a footrest. So when you want to charge for a very long time, this is a nice place to snooze. See you. 
You really can make the most of your time inside thanks to a whole host of creature comforts. The fixed glass roof might not open but it gives an unhindered view of the world above. There's a very nice sounding Bose sound system. There's a menu of sounds of nature that coupled with the ambient lighting can really put you in a relaxed state of mind. Other tech includes connected car features, a multi-view camera and a wireless charger. Just wish the aircon controls were easier to operate. Also, how white those seats stay after some use remains to be seen. Safety kit includes six airbags, ABS, electronic stability control, front and rear parking sensors, tire pressure monitoring, and child seat mounts. ADAS features are also part of the package. Rear seat occupants are pretty well catered to on space in an Ionic 5's back seat. Now I'm just under six feet tall, the front seat is set to my driving position and I have a good amount of knee room to the front seat. The only catch is with the front seat set to its lowest position, the way I like it, there's not much foot room under the seat. Another point of note is that headroom will be tight for anyone taller than say six foot. But to me, the bigger issue is that the seating position is slightly knees up and that's something which we found typical of EVs that place their battery under the floor. The seat itself is very well cushioned and it's also quite accommodating for a third passenger and that's thanks to no center tunnel. There's quite a bit of adjustability in the rear seats too. There's manual backrest recline as well as power adjust to move the seat forwards in case you need more room for luggage in the boot. The seats can also be moved fore and aft via buttons on the front passenger seat and the big boss at the back also has the option to move the front seat forward to free up more rear legroom. There are also rear air conditioning vents at the B pillars, shades for the large windows and a three point power outlet under the seat. The Ionic 5 has V2L of vehicle to load so you can use the car to power appliances via this internal socket or larger items such as an e-scooter at up to 3.6 kilowatts via an external connector. Access to the boot is via a power and gesture control tailgate but usable space is just adequate for what is a large car. The floor is quite high too and there's no spare tire. All you get is a puncture repair kit. There's a 57 litre frunk that can be used to store the charging cables and all. Time to get this show on the road. A brief on the India Spec Ionic 5's details. India gets the EV in single motor rear wheel drive form with a 72.6 kilowatt hour battery pack being the source of power. What should you make of its power figure? At a time when we've become greedy for power and performance numbers from premium EVs, the Ionic 5's 217 horsepower comes across as a bit modest. And fact is, you don't get that pushback onto your seat or that neck snapping acceleration that we've just come to expect from, you know, powerful EVs. Even so, performance is more than satisfactory because you have to remember a 7.6 second 0 to 100 kph time is fast by any measure. See the acceleration in light of a combustion engine car and you'll get what I mean. You can fine tune the driving experience with three drive modes so there's eco, normal and sport and you can toggle between them with this very Porsche like selector on the steering wheel. It's not a rotary selector but a push to select system. The cool thing here is that Eco Mode itself delivers this effortless performance. You can dial things up by moving to Normal Mode. But if you want the most energetic responses, of course, Sport Mode it has to be. It's expectedly smooth in its build of power and there's much else to like about the way the Ionic 5 drives too. Now EVs are all about refinement and the story is no different with the Ionic 5. It just does such a good job of suppressing outside noises. Of course, the motor runs very silently. But the highlight is just how well you are insulated from things like tire noise, road noise. It's just on coarse surfaces that you will hear a bit from the happenings outside. But generally, this is such a calming environment to be in. Complementing that silence is a well sorted ride. What's really remarkable on the Ionic 5 is its ride quality. It is very, very well damped. So I'm going at about 100 kilometers an hour and surface imperfections are dealt with very nicely, very smooth. It's very gentle over the little crests and creases on the road. 
At lower speeds, like you typically do in town, potholes do make their way into the cabin. But the point of note is that you'll hear them more than you'll actually feel them. The suspension being absorbent is a big plus, but does it offer the ground clearance you need? Now, EVs with their big and heavy battery packs and usually long wheelbase are a problem over large speed breakers. No such problems here. Let's try the next one. And it didn't hit, so that's a pretty important win for the Ionic 5 in Indian conditions. Hyundai says the Ionic 5 has a laden ground clearance, that is with a full load of 163mm. That should translate to about 190mm or so unladen, which is the most of all Hyundai's sold in India. Also helping the experience is the braking. The Ionic 5's braking system is also pretty well calibrated uh, in terms of pedal pressure that you need to put. You don't need to learn or relearn things as is often the case with electric vehicles. The brake pedal is also quite natural in its feel and you also get three levels of regen. So there's coasting which means no regen, there's a middle level of regen which is quite usable, then there's strong regen and that maximizes the regenerative ability of the system. A long pull on the left paddle also works as a brake, so you can bring the car to a full halt just by pulling on the left paddle. You can activate single pedal driving too that can bring the car to a complete halt as you step off the accelerator pedal. The Ionic 5 has the makings of a great city car, but is it fun? In terms of handling, it won't quite impress the keenest of drivers, but ordinary folks who just want to have a bit of fun on a twisty road will find quite a lot to like. The acceleration is thrilling, it turns quite keenly. The steering doesn't quite have that natural feeling, it feels a bit artificial, but it is quite enjoyable for that odd fun drive out. The good visibility adds to comfort and confidence, but I do have a pet peeve with the car. A point of note about the driving position, and it is an irritant to me, is that I like to have my steering set to its lowest position and when you're doing that, you'll note that you have a manual lever for steering adjust. And when I do have it at a setting I like, I can't read the speed. It's blocked off by the steering. There'll be more to talk of the car in the future. The Ionic 5 packs in a whole lot of ADAS features and the cameras and radars really give you an extra set of eyes on our roads. But unfortunately, today we don't have the right conditions to really test them out safely. So please do bear with us till we get the car in Mumbai on home turf where we can really put all the features to the test. Till such time, here is all that the Ionic 5 gets. The suite of ADAS features includes forward collision warning and braking, blind spot warning, lane keep assist, adaptive cruise control, high beam assist, rear cross traffic collision avoidance and more. What we'll also put to the test is range. The Ionic 5 for India that uses a 72.6 kWh battery pack delivers an ARAI certified range of 631 km. And we can't wait to see how much that translates to in the real world. As for the other info of interest, the Ionic 5 gets a portable 3.3 kW charger and Hyundai will also set up an 11 kW AC charger at a location of your choice. A full charge to 100% takes just under 7 hours, a 10-80% to charge at 50 kW takes 57 minutes and it's future-proof too with support for 350 kW charging that brings the time down to just 18 minutes. A 3-year or unlimited kilometer warranty on the car and an 8-year or 160,000 kilometer warranty on the battery are standard. So, first impressions of the Ionic 5. Well, it's a winner. It looks sharp outside, it's new age and practical inside, it's tech laden, it drives well and there's the promise of great real world range too. The clincher is that very attractive price tag of 44.95 lakh rupees that's been made possible by Hyundai's decision to assemble the car in India. The price puts the Ionic 5 in a sweet spot in the EV space and is sure to lure buyers from a lower price band as well as those open to spending more. 
Fact is, the Ionic 5's appeal transcends typical segments and is a car good enough to make you reconsider a like-priced SUV from a luxury brand. A Hyundai to take on the Mercs, BMWs and Audis of the world, this is it.